using Python's pathlib module. Have you struggled with file path handling in Python? With the pathlib module, that struggle is over. You no longer need to scratch your head over code like this. Or cringe at the verbosity of code such as this. Using the pathlib module, these two pieces of code can be rewritten using elegant, readable, and Pythonic code as seen on screen. The pathlib module allows cross platform object oriented file path handling, and in this course, you'll see how to work with file paths, the names of directories and files, learn new ways to read and write files, manipulate paths, and the underlying file system and see some examples of how to list files and iterate over them. In this course, you'll see two different Python REPLs being used, both of which use color coding, which makes the syntax of examples easier to understand. For examples that were run on macOS, bpython is being used, while on Windows, the ipython terminal is being used. However, all the code you see running is standard Python and can be run in the Python REPL, which is typically accessed by typing Python at your terminal or command prompt. So now you know what's going to be covered, let's get started. The problem with Python file path handling. Working with files and interactive with the file system are important for many different reasons. The simplest cases may involve only reading or writing files, but sometimes more complex tasks are at hand. Maybe you need to list all the files in a directory of a given type, find the parent directory of a given file, or create a unique file name that doesn't already exist. Traditionally, Python represented file paths using regular text strings. With the support of the OS path standard library, this was adequate, but it was a bit cumbersome, as the second example seen in the introduction shows. However, since paths are not strings, important functionality is spread all around the standard library, including libraries such as OS, GLOB, and SHUtil. The example seen on screen needs three import statements just to move all text files to an archive directory. With paths represented by strings, it's possible, but usually a bad idea, to use regular string methods. For instance, instead of joining two paths with plus like regular strings, you should use os.path.join, which joins paths using the correct path separator on the operating system that you're using. Remember that Windows uses backslash, while Mac and Linux uses forward slash as separators. This difference can lead to hard to spot errors, such as the first example in the introduction working only for Windows paths. The pathlib module was introduced in Python 3.4 to deal with these challenges. It gathers the necessary functionality in one place and makes it available through methods and properties on an easy to use path object. If you're still stuck on legacy Python, there's even a backport available for Python 2. Now that you know more of how Python got here, it's time to see how pathlib works in practice. And that's what you'll be doing in the next section, taking a look at how to work with paths. Working with paths. In this part of the course, you'll start working with pathlib's path objects. You'll look at creating paths, reading and writing files, and moving and deleting files. So let's get started by looking at creating paths. The main thing you'll need to know about is the pathlib path class. There are a few different ways of creating a path. First of all, there are class methods such as CWD, current working directory, and home, your user's home directory. You'll mainly be using the path class in this course, so you can import path from pathlib. And just use path instead of pathlib.path, .path, as seen in the example on screen, which is functionally identical to what you previously saw. For clarity, the rest of the code used in this course will use this import of path from pathlib, and to save time, that code will already be on screen for each example. 
Towards the end of the course, some other elements of Pathlib will be used, and in those cases, the original import of Pathlib will be used. A path can also explicitly be created from its string representation. On Windows, the path separator is a backslash. However, in many contexts, backslash is also used as an escape character in order to represent non-printable characters. To avoid problems, use raw string literals to represent Windows paths. These are string literals that have an R prepended to them. In raw string literals, the backslash character represents a literal backslash. If you don't do this, in some cases, you'll end up with a string, and therefore path, which isn't what you want, and can lead to bugs in your code. Note the difference in output between the two versions of directory, while in other cases you'll generate an error straight away. A third way to construct a path is to join the parts of the path using the special operator forward slash. This operator is used independently of the actual path separator on the platform. The forward slash can join several paths or a mix of paths and strings, as seen, as long as there is at least one path object. If you don't like this notation, you can do the same thing with the join path method. Note that the path is represented by either a Windows path or a POSIX path. The actual object representing the path depends on the underlying operating system. Path.home will return a Windows path on Windows and a POSIX path on macOS or Linux. You'll see more about this later on in the course, but next you'll look at reading and writing files. Reading and writing files. Traditionally, the way to read or write a file in Python has been to use the built-in open function. This is still true as the open function can use path objects directly. The example seen on screen finds all headers in a markdown file and prints them. An equivalent alternative is to call open on the path object. In fact, path.open is calling the built-in open behind the scenes. Which option you use is mainly personal preference. For simple reading and writing of files, there are a few convenience methods in the Pathlib library. Read text opens the path in text mode and returns the contents as a string. Read bytes opens the path in binary and bytes mode and returns the contents as a byte string. Write text opens the path and writes string data to it. Write bytes opens the path in binary bytes mode and writes data to it. Each of these methods handles the opening and closing of the file, making them trivial to use, as seen on screen. Paths can also be specified as simple file names, in which case they are interpreted relative to the current working directory. The example you're seeing now is equivalent to the one you just saw. The resolve method will find the full path. You can confirm that the current working directory is used for simple file names.
Note that when the paths are compared, it's their representations that are compared. Here, path.parent is not equal to pathlib path cwd because path.parent is represented by dot, while pathlib path cwd is represented by the full path to the directory. In the next section of the course, you'll take a look at moving and deleting files.